Now, um, let me share, share with you an example of what I mean by differentiation by service quality. By the way, uh, disclaimer number 17 of 412 today, uh, I've been heavily influenced uh, by two books. One of them uh, I'm sure you've all heard of uh, is by Stephen R. Covey, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Uh, one of those habits that I really, really uh, cannot get out of my mind ever is begin with the end in mind. In other words, what is it you want to accomplish? Establish the vision for what it is you want to establish or accomplish, and then you develop a plan to work to achieve that vision. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, the second one is a book called Give Them the Pickle, and the author of that book is someone you can find yourself when you Google it because I can't remember. Uh, but uh, basically the concept is uh, if a customer is at your store and wants an extra pickle with their sandwich, give them the pickle. <laughs> Don't argue with them. Uh, if you argue with them about the pickle, when's the next time they're going to come back? Never. Does that customer matter to you? Yes, but only if they come back. They only matter if they come back. If you establish a business and you, and you serve everybody in this community once and then nobody ever comes back, guess what? You're out of business. That's called a flash in the pan. You need to have sustained success. So, the Umstead Hotel. How many of you have ever heard of this hotel? It's in the Triangle area. Yeah, I, I had never heard of it. Um, there was a uh, uh, North Carolina Hospital Association uh, meeting uh, in, uh, I want to say it was in February. Uh, and it was in the Triangle, and the, the meeting was happening at like a comfort suites type thing that had a conference room, and you know, comfort suites is a good hotel, uh, and, but I was a little wishy-washy, and I was kind of late signing up, and so by the time I signed up, all the hotel slots were full, and they said, but uh, Mr. Strickland, we have arranged for overflow lodging at the Umstead Hotel, which is only a quarter of a mile away, and, and the price is, is very competitive, and so I called over there, and I made my uh, reservation and didn't think anything else of it until I showed up for my experience at the Umset Hotel. And I am not making this up. I have got to jump down here to show this, okay? I showed up at the, uh, the lobby desk and the gentleman uh, behind the counter, uh, well, let me back up, I pulled up my car, I, I, the person met me at the door before I could even get the door open and said, are you here to check in, sir? Uh, yes, I am. What's your name, sir? My name is Tim Strickland. Okay, Mr. Strickland. He opens the door. Uh, if you'll uh, come this way, we'll, we'll uh, welcome you inside the lobby. And as I walk in the door, he picks up the phone and calls the guy behind the counter. And he says, Strickland. All right? I didn't hear that, but I know that's what happened because the guy inside was not. <laughs> he did not have ESP, and I was not wearing a name tag. Okay? And so I'm literally about this far from here to you, away from the counter, and he's looking at me, making eye contact, saying, Welcome to the Upside Hotel, Mr. Strickland. How may I be of service today? Are you checking in? Oh, gosh, okay, this is freaky. All right. <laughs> so we go through the process of checking in. He does not give me the keys. He wouldn't give me the keys. He said, Now, if you'll come with me, Mr. Strickland, um, I'll escort you uh, to the elevator. All right, now come on. The elevator is from here to that door right there. I can figure it out. And oh, by the way, my luggage... My luggage, oh, don't, don't worry about that, Mr. Strickland. We have your car, we have your keys, we have your luggage. Uh, uh, everything's under control. Uh, and it's so like, okay, all right. And so he walks me to the, ho to the hotel elevator, and this is how he walked. I mean, you talk about self-mastery. I could not walk there. I would not be able to do it. But this guy was so well-trained. He used to treat me like somebody I'm not, okay? He used to treat me like, I, talk about exceeding expectations. I expected mediocre, and I'm already, okay, this is amazing, but I'm so uncomfortable. Because this is major service. So he escorts me to the elevator, pushes the button for me, and then hands me the keys. He's holding the elevator door open. Okay, Mr. Trubo, here are your keys. It's room number, blah, blah, blah. And uh, by the time you get, or shortly after you arrive at your room, uh, your luggage will arrive. Okay, great. All right, so I go up uh, to my room. I unlock the door. I've got it open. Uh, I walk in the room. It's a really nice room. I mean, it's a nice hotel room. It's, it's nothing, you know, super fancy, but it's a really nice hotel room. Uh, but I did notice that there was a lot of furniture in the room, a lot of drawers and things like that. Um, and I had just enough time to discover that um, when there was a little knock on the door. And there on the luggage rack with the guy, the, the bellhop, he's knocking on the door, he opened it up, and there's everything that was in my car. Everything. 
I felt very fortunate that he did not bring up the jumper cable. I mean, it was like, okay, I had a hang-up bag and a suitcase I was going to bring in, but there was a briefcase and a notebook, and I don't even remember what all else, and it's there. And he's like, okay, I've got all your stuff. Okay, so I'm like, he's going to walk in and dump it, right? No, he walks in, he hangs up the hanger bag, he sets the suitcase on the counter, face up, so all I have to do is open it up. And then he says, now, Mr. Strickler, if you don't mind, I'd like to tell you about a few of our uh, amenities, which, of course, are all provided free of charge to you. And one of them was free shoe shine service. Um, he says, Mr. Strickland, all you have to do is hang your doors. They keep calling me Mr. Strickland, by the way. Um, all you have to do is hang your shoes in this bag on this door uh, by midnight. And by 6 a.m., your shoes will be back and they will be shined. Uh, and I said, how much is that? Oh, it's totally free. Complimentary, sir. It's complimentary. It's our pleasure. Um, okay, well, I'm like, okay, I'm going to try that. He opens the drawers. He says, here's where places where you can put your clothes. Uh, and, uh, and I'm reaching in my pocket to offer a tip, and he's like, my pleasure, sir, and he's out the door. It would not even take a tip. I mean, it was amazing. I'm like, okay, I cannot wait to get my shoes shined. I happen to have two pairs of shoes that needed to be shined, and so that night, about 1130, I'm like, shoe shine. So I put the shoes outside, I'm thinking, who's going to stop somebody from stealing my shoes? I was afraid I was going to wake up in the morning, and not only would I not have shoes, both pairs of my shoes were out there, and I was going to have to go down to this conference and sock feet. But I woke up, the alarm went off about 6.05, and about 6.05 and a half, I was at the door, and sure enough, not hanging on the door, but in these really nice wicker baskets, stacked up, big, big wicker baskets, right here and right here, stacked up outside my door. Okay, either they got me a really big breakfast, or there's a baby, or those are my shoes. All right, so I reached up, and I opened up one of the wicker baskets. Sure enough, there's a pair of shoes, and I swear it looked like they were brand new, wrapped in that, you know that new shoe paper that they wrapped the shoes in? That it was wrapped in that, and they were actually shined. And they were my shoes. <laughs> the right shoes. So what I'm trying to tell you is that you can really differentiate yourself with service. And, you know, they, they charge a, a lot of money for their hotel stay, but I was able to get in at, at, you know, some kind of conference rate. And so if I ever have the opportunity again, guess where I'm going to stay over there? I mean, that would be the place, because they differentiated themselves from a service perspective. All right. Now, how many of you run your businesses that way? <laughs> Teresa does. All right. Yeah. The Chamber of Commerce. A round of applause for the Chamber of Commerce. All right. Okay, I'm here to tell you that the hospital does not run our business that way. We're, we're moving in that direction, but, uh, you know, we aren't there yet. We don't have people trained to hold their hands behind their back while they walk and take half steps. It was amazing.